Hey, my Southern California District family. Oh, my God. Welcome to the 2021 Spring Conference. Yeah, y'all, we are here. We made it. We made it. I know some didn't feel like we would ever get here, but Lord, thanks be unto God. We are here. Absolutely, positively honored to be your host tonight. For those that don't know me, I'm Pastor Richard Miller, lead servant of Perfecting Grace Church in San Diego, and it is an honor to be the host for the kickoff service because this is the night y'all it gets started yeah yeah this is just the beginning of this council y'all know how we do on thursday night yeah let's get ready let's get ready to have some church but listen we're going to need you to do a few things for us okay is that all right we're going to need you one to comment we want to give you the freedom and the liberty to comment in the section y'all in the comment section when you hear something that resonates with you Oh, just put a hallelujah, put a thank you, Jesus, put a preach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. We want to see the comments. We love to see the comments, absolutely. Listen, then we're going to need you to click like and hearts and give us some hearts. We want to see that, that, that screen just flowing with hearts all night long. Then we want you to share. Yes, that little button right there. Hit the share button. And lastly, and this is so important, we want you to bring somebody to the council with you. Now, how do we do that? In the old school, you wanted to bring somebody to church with you. You would drive by their house and pick them up and bring them to church. Well, in this virtual world, in this online world, all you got to do is type the name of your friends right in the comment section, right? You just going to snatch them and bring them. That just brings them to church. When you type their name in the, right now, just start typing your friends' names on your Facebook. Just start typing their names. It brings them to church with you. <laughs> yeah, so we want, we want to get these numbers up, y'all. Yeah, let's get the numbers up for tonight. Oh, my God, because we got an incredible night planned for you. Listen, I would be remiss if we didn't first thank God. I need the hand clapping emoji right there. Just pause right there. Give me the hand. We got to thank God, y'all. We made it. We made it. Listen, we thank God for blessing us and that his will would be done for this council. We want to give honor and deference to those whom honor is due. And where would we be? Where would this council be without our general? I like to call him the general because we have lost so many generals in 2020. And we are thankful that we still have our father figure. For many of us, he's the spiritual father. Yeah, y'all already know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one and only, the incomparable, the iconic, the, the honorable Bishop Donnie in McGriff. Y'all give some thumbs up, give some hearts. Let Bishop McGriff know that you love him. Absolutely, let him know you love him. And where would Moses be without his Joshua? Yeah, I'm talking about our chairman, suffragan Bishop William A. Benson, an incredible brilliant mind we thank God for his leadership and and how he has shown us how to serve and be a follower so we thank God for the leadership of our chairman we want to thank God for all of our suffering bishops and our district elders and our pastors and, and all of our uh, auxiliary leaders and and every leader and minister and deacon in their own capacity but where would we be without the spouses. Come on, pastors, I know I'm talking. Where would we be? How would we have made it through this pandemic? Because pastoring in 2020, oh, it was a whole, oh, it was a whole new thing, y'all. It, <laughs> it was a different ball game. So we thank God for our, our spouses that stood by us and encouraged us and told us to keep moving forward. Yeah, give them some, uh, just type the name of your pastor. If you, if you got a bomb pastor, if you, you got a pastor that just is awesome and amazing, yeah, you just type the name of your pastor. Let them know you love them. Ta type the name of your first lady. Type the name of anybody that you think has done an amazing job this 2020 and moving into 2021. Is that all right? Listen, let's get started. Let's get started. I want to open up with prayer and a scripture, and then I'm going to get out the way. So this praise and worship, I know y'all waiting for the praise and worship. Yeah, we ready to shout. We ready to dance. It's been a while, y'all. Is that all right? Listen, let's pray. It has been said. That before we ask you for anything, Lord, we got to thank you for everything. Lord, we, we may have been shut in, but we have not been shut out. Lord, we woke up with new mercies and it feels like new joy and new grace and new healing and new love. Lord, we thank you for being who you are in our lives. Lord, we ask you to bless this council tonight, Lord, that your will be done. Lord, that we not be self-conscious but we be God conscious, that we not be self-centered, but we be God-centered, Lord, that you empower and you edify. You do what only you can do, Lord, and we be thankful to praise you, and we give you all the honor and all the glory in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, 
we pray hallelujah listen we thank god i want to open us up with a scripture and i believe it is so appropriate our bishop he established our council on the idea and the concept of expansion so i want to read first chronicles the fourth chapter verse number 10 and it reads jabez called on the god of israel saying oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my border and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from harm so that it might not hurt me in my favorite part and god granted what he asked ah yeah y'all we got to give god some praise right there we got to give him some praise right there now are y'all ready are you ready for some praise and worship listen let's start clapping our hands let's start sharing let's start commenting let's let's get ready for the southern california district praise and worship anybody glad to be in the service one more time like this
Praise the Lord and greetings to the entire household of faith. Joining us once again live here at our Spring Southern California District Virtual Conference. We have some exciting things coming up for you the rest of this week. Starting tomorrow, Friday morning at 9 a.m., wake up to some morning glory. We are calling all prayer warriors led by Pastor Jackie Guzman. Follow that, our opening session at 9.30 a.m. So we invite everyone to please come on out, be a part of our opening session. Then we have two dynamic seminars for everyone as well. Men's seminar will be facilitated by Pastor Orlando Harris. And we have our women's seminar facilitated by Pastor Joyce Patman. Both of these awesome seminars starting at 10 a.m. So we look for everyone to come out. Something for the men and something for the women starting at 10 a.m. Then at 1 p.m., everyone, once again, you're invited to join us for a special throwback service. That's right, down memory lane. Share wonderful memories of our late Bishop Michael J. Garrett, also known as one of our former CDC uh, chairmen. Then tune in for this awesome service as we reminisce back in the day before this great expansion. Then at 2 o'clock p.m., we invite you to be a part of our business session. This is session starting at 2 o'clock p.m. At 4 p.m., we have Women in Ministry panel discussion that will be aired on Facebook. Then at 7 p.m., what everyone is waiting for, 7 o'clock p.m., we ignite the evening with a dynamic word from on high coming from our guest speaker and this awesome man of God, the Apostle Kelvin Hines of Life Church, Phoenix, Arizona. So come on out, saints of God. Some exciting things going on tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you there and seeing you soon. God bless. Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Suffolk Bishop, Dr. Lafayette Boyd. I'm the regional bishop for region number three of the Southern California District Council. Region number three represents the country of Belize. We give honor to our diocesan, the Honorable Bishop Donnie N. McGriff, our Chairman, Suffragan Bishop William A. Benson, our Regional Bishops, District Elders, and the Pastors of this fine Council. And on behalf of our Executive Board, we want to thank everyone who has supported this fine Council through these turbulent times over the last year. I've been given the honor of raising this evening's offering. And as a reminder to our leaders, our diocesan is asking the Suffolk bishops to support with $300 this week, our district elders with $200. If you have a national license or you're a minister with $100, and we ask the lay members, if you can, to support the council with $25 on tonight. We certainly thank and praise the Lord for all of your sacrifice. And we certainly look forward to coming together once again, where we can wrap our arms around one another in the love and unity of the spirit. Now, if you'll grab your electronic device, you can give by way of Cash App, Givelify app, or if you have a debit card, you can go to the SCDC website, hit the square button, and complete your secure transaction that way. Once again, on behalf of our diocesan, the executive board, we want to thank you for your liberality in giving. Now let's go ahead and complete those transactions and get ready for the word of the Lord. God bless you, God keep you, 
May he write his name all over your heart. In Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. Once again, uh, we're here at the Southern California District Council um, this April uh, 15th, 16th, and 17th, and I pray that thus far you have been enjoying yourself, enjoying the Word of God, the seminars, the teaching, the praise team, and enjoying the anointing of God and what God is doing in our midst. Amen. Tonight, tonight, uh, we have our chairman will be our speaker for tonight uh, in the person of Suffragan Bishop, Dr. William A. Benson, the pastor of Total Deliverance Worship Center and where they are at that new location at this time, formerly known as Apostolic Greater Apostolic Faith Temple. Amen. I want you to enjoy the word of God and pray for him and continue to pray for the council Pray that God will continue to move in our midst. And we are, each night, looking for a mighty move of God. Thank God. Now put your hands together. I know this is a, a virtual meeting, but you can put your hands together where you are in your home. And give God thanks and pray for our speaker uh, tonight, uh, Bishop, Suffragan Bishop, Dr. William A. Benson. To the book of Exodus. Chapter number 14, amen. Exodus, chapter 14, verse number one. If you have it, say praise the Lord. And this is the beginning of God's holy word, so as it's written, so shall I read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Perfarf, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephar, before it shall be encamped by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told that the king of Egypt, that the people fled, and the hearts of Pharaoh and all his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have, we, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariots and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots. And all the chariots of the Egyptians and the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horses and his army and overlooked them encamped by the sea beside Frithroth before Baal Zephar. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. Amen. If I could give you a title for the time that you have uh, given me for such a time as this, it is simply, are you prepared for what you prayed for? Are you prepared for what you prayed for? If I could uh, honestly go back 
Amen. To uh, uh, Exodus, uh, I believe that we would like to uh, visit Exodus uh, chapter, amen, chapter number three, uh, verse number seven, just to begin to paint a picture as we begin to move forward. And chapter three, verse number seven says, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of that word. Amen. It's very important that we, we begin to put these particular scriptures together because as we start uh, with Exodus chapter number 14, uh, it, is, it is preceded by Exodus chapter number 3, verse number 7, uh, where we, we find ourselves with God uh, dealing with this elected individual by the name of Moses. You know the story of Moses. Moses was found in the, in the Nile River where his mother uh, put him there because they were after all of the Hebrews after that. The Bible says that it was Pharaoh's sister who found uh, uh, Moses, amen. Matter of fact, she named Moses for the word Moses mean drawn from. And the Bible said that God in his infinite wisdom would maneuver uh, Moses' biological mother to become uh, the surrogate mother, if you will, to Pharaoh's sister who by chance was still with milk to be able to feed Moses. I wish I had some time with this. Bible says that it was him that was not only raised by his real mother, but he was placed in the Egyptians camp. We learned how to write and he had learned to be creative. He was intelligent. He was a warrior. Amen. But he was still a Hebrew. The Bible says that as he got older, he could see the mistreatment of the Hebrews to one point in time that he saw an Egyptian a man taking advantage of a Hebrew and he jumped in and killed the Egyptian. The Bible said that after he killed him, he ran away. Amen. And you know the story. He ended up getting married to a woman by the name of Sephora and he moved to the back side of the desert where we called Midian and we know that it was God who left him there until it was time for his assignment. The Bible says that now verse number seven comes in where we had the children of Israel who were now in Gosha, which is a part of Egypt, who were brought over by Joseph because Joseph was one of their forefathers who was not only the governor but placed them there to multiply. Bible said that now after the after those who had put Joseph in place the new pharaohs came in and specifically the Bible says and this pharaoh knew not Joseph knew not what Joseph had did nor did he know the father of Abraham or Isaac and the Bible says that they begin to grow grow to the point where it was bringing on some type of fear of the Egyptians. And one of the counselors said, Pharaoh, if we continue to allow them to grow, man, they would uh, join up with our enemies. We found out that there was a lot of folk who did not like the Egyptians, man, and, and because of who they were, they were very harsh and, and they were very territorial. But because the Hebrews begin to grow. They thought that not only would they join up with their enemies, but then they would take the enemy, their secrets, and show them how they built things and show them how they plant. And they would just set up a whole nother territory based on inside information. So they said, what we need to do is put them in bondage. Amen. And the Bible says that they begin to become taskmasters. They, they were friends, but they became taskmasters. 
masters and begin to have them make a man a building material out of mud and straw amen they begin to now abuse them and and take away their privileges and one of the things that they took away was their ability Ability to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I believe that when the Bible says that he saw, amen, their afflictions and he began to hear their cry, a lot of times people think it was because of all the things that were taken from them. And I would say partially so. But when you take away somebody's ability to worship God, when you, when you interfere with their connection with God, there is a moan and a groan that utters up that only God can hear. And I believe that it was just not the fact that they were put in prison, but they were forced now to worship the God of Egypt, uh, which was Eldon. And not only Eldon, but Ray, the sun god, and the sea god, and the wheat god, and, and all of the other different gods. And, and, and when you have worshipped the one and true God, it is agony to be made to worship a false god. And not only were they trying to make them worship a false god, their god did not talk back. This is why Paul let us know earlier in the letters, he said, have we not a high priest that is touched by the feelings of of our infirmities and so they got tired of trying to worship a God that did not speak back and the Bible says that they were in prison and they cried out because when you can't worship you cry y'all ain't helping me up in here amen because something has to be broken the Bible says now he brings in Moses he says Moses I've heard my children call for me I need you to go in there and I need you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go the Bible says that now Moses gives him a litany of excuses excuses even to the fact that he had a problem with his speech uh, the bible said that it kindled the wrath of god that he said well if you can't talk let me raise up your brother aaron and aaron would be a servant to you and you would be a god unto Sir, uh, aaron and the bible said that they go in town and they tell them that god sent him because the main thing that he had to tell moses because he knew that he would be asked questions he said, listen, now I'm going to go down there and do what you told me to do. But who should I say sent me? He said, you tell them that I am that I am. Oh uh, God, the Bible said when he gets down there, he founds out that the enemy is not going to cooperate. Even when you have an assignment with God, the enemy is on a, my God, probationary period that he breaks because he's not supposed to mess with you. But because he is jealous of where God wants you to go, the Bible said that he would not do what God told him to do. The Bible said that there was a litany of plagues. It was 10 of them. But most people said that there is nine plagues legs and Ten is judgment. And they say tenth is judgment because it ends in death. The Bible says that when he went on, he provided one plague after another. And we find out that it was not enough, amen, to make the enemy back off. It wasn't until the tenth judgment plague came where it took, amen, every firstborn. And the Bible said, but God said, for you, my people, get in your house and put blood on the plant lantern of the door and when a death angel come it shall pass by the Bible said that after they did that it was a Pharaoh who lost his son and after he lost his son God did something to his heart and he said listen them, them, them Hebrews them, them Israelites whatever, get, get them out of here wherever they won't let them go the Bible Bible said that the Lord specifically told Moses on your way out I need you to stop and I need you to get all the silver and the gold and the pots and, and the shekels and everything that you would need to worship me remember now the Bible said that he took them out into the wilderness uh, that they might put up an altar that they might sacrifice for God which gives me the understanding that this whole thing happened uh, because they were not able to praise God 
anymore. And so God said, now I need you to go out. And this is the part that got me, first lady. He took him out into the wilderness to worship. He didn't take him out to a resort. He did not take him out to Disneyland. He says, I'm going to take you out to a place of wilderness and you have to build an altar. I wish I had some people up in here. Amen. He, what he was trying to tell him uh, that praise is not going to come as easy as it did when you was at Gosha. I wish I had somebody help me up in here. He said, you're going to have to put some elbow grease into this uh, because there's not going to be like you think it would be. Uh, the Bible says as they begin to walk out, uh, they now find themselves in some strange places uh, because when God releases you, we think things gets better but no it doesn't necessarily get that better but God does something because at the end of the day he has to be able to get the glory I was as that as they begin to walk out they got all this gold and all these pots and all the shekels and all the silvers amen and they're walking out and as they walk out they walk past amen what we consider the garden area of Egypt because Egypt is built in stages because they are awesome uh, oh god engineers and and it was placed along the river nile oh god help me and the bible says as they begin to walk out they begin to walk past a man all of the trees they begin to walk past the orange trees and the and the grapes and they begin to walk past the peaches they begin a man to walk past the apples and they begin to walk past all everything as they begin to enter into the wilderness the bible says this the Bible says when they got to a certain point, uh, this is why they mention uh, Migad. It's very important that you understand that because the Bible lets us know that as they're walking out, uh, they understand that there's really literally a fork in the road. Uh, the way that they could have went right, it would have took them to Canaan and they wouldn't have had to even deal with the Dead Sea. But God took them through the way of Megad, and, and that is what we would call a dead end. And not only that, there was no more food. There was no more produce. Uh, when they get out there, they look at Moses and said, Moses, uh, did you bring us out here to die because we know this land like you know it and the way you got us going is a dead end we missed the right turn days ago and now you have us in a place where there's no gardens there's no food that's when they said I would rather go back to the leeks and the onions it was not necessarily because they loved it but they noticed they had walked past all the plants and they had walked past everything that they would normally eat now they're out in a desert where there's no food they have nothing there to sustain them matter of fact the further they get out to oh God into the dead end they lose faith and hope in God. They forget that just in Exodus, they were crying for God to give them a plan. And sometimes God's plan, it has to be walked by faith and not by sight. They let sight begin to mess them up. And this is the greatest thing that could ever happen to them. The Bible says now Moses finds himself in a dilemma because as the leader, he finds himself himself in a dead end with over 6,000 folk that are looking at him saying Moses you have tricked us we'll put all our faith in you and you have brought us into a bad place the Bible says now somehow Pharaoh gets the word and says Pharaoh you know those people that you let go we found out that they have all escaped the Bible says that God does something with Pharaoh's heart and he hardens his heart and then he says I need you to get everybody, get all the chariots and get all the horses, not just the average ones. I need the ones that are fast, the ones that look good. Now we're getting ready to go back and get them. And I'm trying to figure out why would God touch his heart the first time to let him go and allow him to touch his heart again to go get them. Because God likes to make his own stories interesting. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. I was as they begin to now change chase him down. It was funny because he needed to have everything pristine. The fastest horses and the best chariots because Israel had an eight 
eight-day advantage on them, where they was eight days ahead of them. And the Bible said that they had now found out that releasing them was the worst thing they could have ever done. Because now, it's eight days later, they had no one to build. They had no one to plow. They had no one to pick. They had no one to boss around. And they went to him. They went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, I think we've done a bad thing. We've allowed all our slaves to go. And we can't even do nothing for ourselves. We need to go back and get them slaves. Can I stop right here? That's what the devil does. After God has saved your soul and brought you into a brand new place, the devil tries to come back and get you because he said you was a good worker when you was with me. He says that you was a good student when you was with me. And he tries to bring you out of your future and stick you back in your past. I was sad when they went after him. They found out that someone told Moses that here comes the chariots and they're coming to get you. And the Bible says, and I'm trying to figure out who is this person telling the story back and forth because it seemed like they are a secret spy because the same people, you better watch some folk. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. That's going back talking to Moses and going back talking to Pharaoh at the same time. Bible said now we find out that Pharaoh gets an understanding that they've gone through the way of Megai where he knows himself that's a dead end I thought they would go the other way but now we gotta find ourselves where we can encamp around them we gonna do a circle around them and we gonna take them out in the middle of the wilderness Bible said they were on their way when Moses find out they're on their way Bible said that he falls down he begins is to cry before God and he asks God, God what have you done? You have brought me in a place and the people are about to lynch me because they think I've brought them into a place to die. I was said, the Lord looked at him and said listen here Moses, what's in your hand? He said it was a rod. He said I need you to use it. I need you to stretch it out over the sea. My God and I know you was waiting on a Pentecostal message but this is the second time, which is the first time that we find out about another mighty Russian weed. The Bible said the wind came and it split, oh God. It split the sea in half and they walked over on dry ground and here comes the enemy falling behind them and I can only see Mr. Farrell's face thought he was chasing them into a dead end and he see the seas open up and they begin to march on dry land. Can I get you to hear something? Sometime God will allow the devil to follow you into a trap because that's how he was going to get the devil off your back by having him follow you into a place that he thought it was a dead end but God was getting ready to make the best miracle of your life. Someone needs to holler right there. I believe that in this season God is trying to tell some of you I know that it's been hard but you forgot you prayed and I heard your prayer but you cannot expect me to fix your prayer the way you prayed it I have to fix it where it glorifies me the Bible said that my ways are not like your ways and my thoughts are not like your thoughts only thing you need to do is trust me and I'll be a way maker the Bible said that God's journey jacked them up because they thought it was going to be a smooth journey. Can I tell some of you, you better keep your eyes off the journey and trust God with all your heart and all your might and lean not to your own understanding. I was sad that he lets me know that all of this was God preparing a way that they would be able to escape from the enemy forever. I'll tell you the part and I go somewhere. I am saying that when the enemy came, when every last enemy came into my God in the middle of the waters, my God, Moses stood on the other side and waved his rod. 
and he allowed for the waters to come back and swallow up all the enemies. And I tell you something, if you want to get rid of your enemies, you just got to make it to the other side because I believe that God is getting ready to swallow up your past that you never have to deal with it again. Can I get you to tell somebody that is at least six feet in distance and say, are you prepared to do what God has asked you to do because he's only answering your prayer and your prayer was is for God to take you to another level but he didn't tell you the journey he was going to use or the people he was going to use but I'm here to tell you hold on to God's unchanging hands because he's taking you to a miracle place you missing the story the story is not necessary necessarily about deliverance but it's about a miracle and I'm telling you don't let corona distract you don't let the injustice even though it's very important distract you but I need you to keep your eyes on the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus because you pray the prayer that God wants to do a thing in you because you've been in a place where you've been crying you've been confused you've been messed up it seemed like ever since you prayed to God things then got worse things are starting to happen unexpectedly demons are marching around the house and you said wait a minute God I prayed that you would open up a window and pour out a blessing where I would have room enough to receive I prayed that you would make me the head and not the tail I prayed that you'd make me the lender and not the borrow. And ever since I prayed, everything has gone to the left. But my, my, my God, he told me in his scriptures that we not lean up on ourselves, but trust God with all our heart and all our might. Can I preach it like I feel it? I believe that God is trying to tell you, you prayed for this. But you wasn't prepared because the journey it wasn't given to the swift nor to the strong but he that endureth to the end the mothers would tell me put your hands in the hands of the man that come to see put your hands in the hands of the man who caused the winds to shut up you need to trust God with all your heart you need to trust God he's getting ready to swallow up your enemies he's getting ready to perform a miracle you got to believe that he's a miracle worker you got to believe that he's a problem solver and because the next level of your life is anointed the next level of your life you are cast out demons the next level of your life you lay hands on the sick why because your experience is going to help you understand the faith in God your experience is going to be the reason why you trust in God your journey is going to be the reason why you don't doubt God and eyes have not seen nor ears have heard nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God has for you look at somebody that's six feet distance and tell your neighbor I trust God but my tears seem like they don't trust them I trust God but my health seem like they don't trust them I trust God but it seemed like the devil don't trust him but I'm getting ready to walk in boldness walk in victory and I'm going to keep on walking and I'm going to shout while I'm walking and I'm going to dance while I'm walking because I wasn't ready for God had for me I prayed it but I wasn't ready I thought it but I wasn't ready but now I'm ready I'm ready to win I'm ready to praise him in the wilderness I'm still gonna praise him in the wilderness I'm still gonna lift him up in the wilderness I'm still gonna call on his name someone shout glory shout glory 
Tell somebody, are you prepared for what God got for you? Are you prepared for what you prayed for? If it hurt that bad, trust God. And the next level, he's going to open up a window and pour you out a blessing. But listen here, God had to take you on a place to drown your enemy. God had to take you in a place to drown your enemy. God had to take you in a place to drown your past. God had to take you in a place that would drown your sickness. God had to take you in a place that would drown your hopelessness. God had to take you in a place that would drown your debt. God had to take you in a place that would drown your sickness. God had to take you in a place that would drown your haters. God had to take you in a place that would drown your naysayers. God had to take you in a place that would drown your backbiters. God had to take you in a place ah, by himself. Tell somebody, and they're drowned dead. My past is drowned dead. My debt is drowned dead. My sickness is drowned dead. My heartache is drowned dead. Every, everything that is not like God. Someone shout, it's drowned dead. My yesterday is drowned dead. My sickness is drowned dead. Listen here. This is one of the few times that you see God trap the enemy on your behalf. My God from Zion. This is how God flips it. That's how much favor you have. Someone shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Glory. Ah, shout glory. Shout glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh God, tell yourself, it's a dead end with a miracle. It's a dead end with a miracle. It's a dead end with a miracle. It's a dead end attached to a miracle. I said it's a dead end attached to a miracle. The seed divided was a miracle. The dry ground was a miracle, but it was attached to a dead end. Yes, yes, and you ask yourself, why do I gotta go through all this? Because, honey, there's a promise after the miracle. Y'all ain't helping me. Because the Bible says that the dry ground was a miracle. The dividing of the water was a miracle. But on the other side of the miracle was a promise. It was Canaan. Honey, if you make it through the flood, if you make it through the dry ground, on the other side is the miracle that you prayed for in chapter number Can you tell somebody? It's on the other side. The promise is on the other side of the miracle. Shout on the miracle. Rejoice on the promise. Shout on the miracle and rejoice on the promise. Because your promise is on the other side of the miracle. And the Bible says, be not weary. It well do. Because in due season, you shall. Said, be not weary and well do you shall reap if you fail be not weary and well do 
for you shall weep if you faint not. Be not weary and well doing, for you shall weep if you faint not. Come on and give the Lord a hand, praise. Oh, God. Are you prepared what you pray for? Are you prepared for what you pray for? Listen to this. If the children of Israel would have known when they cried in chapter number three, verse number seven, what they was going to have to go through to get to Canaan, they would have changed their mind. That's why God don't show us everything. They almost talked themselves out of a miracle and almost convinced them that the promise wasn't good. When you pray, you got to be prepared for what you pray for. Because a lot of times we pray and James says, what we ask, we ask amiss. Not because it was the wrong thing. is we forgot about the preparation. We forgot about the journey. There's some pains attached to a promise. And there's some faith that's attached to a miracle. I believe that God is getting ready to do something in this season. Don't fall for the distraction. The Bible said that we are just pilgrims passing by. This is not our home. Even though while we're here, we want to make it the best place possible. But not enough energy as if this is our permanent residence. The Bible says that I go to prepare a place for you. He said if it wasn't true, I would never have took time to make this lie up. He said, but I go to prepare a place for you. That where I be, you'll be there also. He says, because in my father's house, there's no section eight. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. There's no townhouses. There's no duplexes. Oh, God. There's no single flats. He said, there's mansions. Ah, you already pre-qualified. No down payment. If you got the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, my daughter, got the revelation of Jesus. That is your down payment. You got the seal. And you get the key when you get the Holy Ghost. That's what he told Peter. He told Peter, I'm going to give you the key. My God, the Hey, there ain't nothing like having a key to your own mansion. Oh, God. And listen, listen, first lady, I, I, that's a whole nother message. But I remember we were talking about, amen, Peter having a key. Amen. And, and, but really, uh, the first lady and I was talking and she was saying, listen, uh, that was a good message. She said, but we, we ain't got to die. Amen. Doing the will of God. And I said, yeah, that is kind of bad because the Bible said that Jesus prophesied how Peter would die. Amen. But listen to this. But, but Peter didn't have a problem dying because four chapters before he gave him a key to the house. Y'all ain't helping me. So he would leave one house into another. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. God will never take something from you without giving you something better. Get out of here. Come on and give the Lord a hand praise. Listen. Can I tell you that some of you are going through hell. But it's connected to what you prayed for. 
because sometimes we'll forget about what we pray for and we start focusing on the journey. And, 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 and the mothers told us that nobody told us that this road would be easy. But because you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, the other part of that is you say, but I don't believe that he brought us this far to leave us. And then, and then, you, then you tell the devil, I don't feel no ways tired. You tell the devil, because I've come too far from where I started from. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We thank God for this awesome night, this powerful night, this anointed night. My God, do I have anybody out there that was blessed tonight? Just type in the comments. I was blessed. I was blessed. Oh, my God. This is how we start off the first night of a council. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm so hyped, y'all. I'm so hyped. Listen, I, I, I would be remiss without ending this service without doing what we do at can I can I take some liberties right now I want to do what we do at perfecting grace and and we call it the call to action yeah the call to action see see we we've shouted and we've sang the songs and and we heard a word that was amazing and it touched us but what do we do now right there's been a call to action and it's biblical. Don't, don't you know that on the day of Pentecost when, when Peter preached, they said, what must we do to be saved? There, there was a call to action. This is the altar call. This is the call to action. And, and we're praying right now. We don't know who's on here, but we pray there might be somebody that says, I want to know the God that you're talking about. Mm. I, I want to have that kind of relationship. I, I want to be closer. Nicodemus went to Jesus at night asking, how can a man be born again? And, and Jesus told him, you got to be born of the water and the spirit. Listen, there might be somebody out there that you say, I want to be born again. I want to be born of the water and of the spirit. There are ministers. We have an incredible team with the Southern California District Council that's online right now, ready, ready to to minister to you we have intercessors and prayer warriors ready to intercede on your behalf all you have to do is type in the comments i want to be born again and someone will reach out to you oh we can baptize you yeah we can baptize you we can pray with you that you be filled with his spirit hallelujah i believe it i believe it wouldn't it be an amazing night that we start off with a baptism and somebody being filled with the holy ghost i believe him by faith that this can be done hallelujah listen there might be somebody that that says listen i've been born again and i've been saved but i've i've kind of fallen off and i've strayed away i just i just need to get that 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 connection again i need to get plugged back in can i pray with you can i pray for you right is that all right let's pray dear heavenly father lord we thank you uh, we thank you for tonight for the word that that pierced our souls, Lord. It broke up the fallow ground. The, the seeds have been planted, Lord. Oh, and then we're waiting for someone to water it. But Lord, you get the increase. Lord, we pray right now for that soul that says, I need prayer. I need healing. I need a change in my life. Lord, I want to live for you. Lord, we pray for them right now that one, you would inspire them, Lord, but you would not leave them in inspiration. You would move them to revelation that what they heard tonight, Lord, it was a revelation revelation that they've never heard before they've they've experienced you like never before but lord don't leave them in revelation but move them move them to transformation that tonight is a transformative encounter in their lives lord we pray this in your name lord we ask you to break up the fallow ground those that need healing lord uh, not only in their physical body but lord mentally lord somebody needs their mind to be healed lord and not only their mind but their hearts there are broken hearts but lord you are the mender of broken hearts lord we pray and we believe by faith that it is done it is done lord we pray these things in your name in the name that is above every name hallelujah i feel it right now i feel it right now lord you're moving you're moving lord you can move right now lord even now even now lord i pray just as the centurion prayed lord i don't you don't have to come here lord you can do it over over line or online virtually lord the centurion said don't come to my house lord but just send the word lord we send the word right now 
we send a word right now of healing lord we speak it by faith by faith it is done we declare and decree in the name that is above every name demons tremble and flee at this name the name that has power the name of jesus we pray lord Ah, oh, we count it done we count it done by faith by faith you got to believe it now you got to believe it we can pray all night but do you believe <laughs> that's the question do you believe and if you have faith there's nothing that can't be done you can move mountains if you just have the faith the size of a mustard seed hallelujah we thank god for tonight we want to remind you, you've seen the Cash App and the Givelify and the PayPal. If this has been a blessing to you, please make sure you, you bless the council. You bless the council. It's all right. This is good ground to sow a seed. We thank God for our honorable bishop and our chairman and all the pastors. And we look forward. Listen, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Absolutely. This council is going on. We look forward to seeing you because tonight was the first night. So you know if tonight was like this. Oh, my God. Get ready for tomorrow, y'all. Let's get ready. Listen, I'm Pastor Richard Miller. It has been my honor to be with you tonight, and I look forward to seeing you. God bless you.